So many people with diabetes are told this. You've got too much sugar in your blood, so don't eat sugar. And don't eat anything that produces sugar like bread. And that's understandable, that's sensible. But take a look at Japan. Um, the dietary staple in Japan for centuries has been rice. Huge amounts of rice, obviously very high starch, high carbohydrate. And if you look in adults over the age of 40, prior to 1980, the prevalence of diabetes was 1 to 5%, quite low. What's happened in Japan since 1980? Well, that arrived, and so did that. And this is not traditional Japanese food, but it has arrived in a very big way, and fat content in the Japanese diet has gone up and up. It's not as bad as ours, but it's gone up. You can see the trend, and carbohydrate has gone down, meaning rice is being neglected in favor of meat and cheese and so forth. And what happens? This is moderate overweight. It's going up. This is obesity. We're not there yet, really, with a lot of obesity in Japan. But you see the trend. People are getting heavier. And when that happens, prior to 1980, diabetes was 1 to 5%. By 1990, it was 11 to 12%. The importance of this is that we think of diabetes as genetic. It runs in families. It's true. But did genes change from 1980 to 1990? No. What changed is the environment, and it changes fast. And diabetes runs right in very rapidly. Let's take a lesson from the United States. Um, if you go back 100 years, meat consumption was roughly 150 pounds per person per year. And it's gradually gone up and up and up and up to over 200 pounds. Now, by the way, um, if you look at red meat, red meat has actually gone down a little bit, but we have more than made up for it with chicken. <laughs> Americans now, well, people are thinking, well, it's, it's not red meat. It must be healthier for me. Americans now eat more than a million chickens per hour. If you look at the US, USDA statistics, it's more than nine billion per year. Do the math. It's more than a million per hour. And we, I have to say we are more out of shape than we have ever been in the history of this country. So now the, let me say a special word of condemnation for cheese. Um, a, about a century ago, Americans ate less than four pounds of cheese in a year's time. But right about 1960, people figured out that if you put a telephone in your pizza shop, the whole world will eat your product. And so cheese intake went up, 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 up. And now actually in 2009, we're over 32 pounds per person per year. Well, where are we putting 50 extra pounds of meat and 30 extra pounds of cheese every year for every person? Well, not, that's not all there is to it. Let's talk about sugar. The blue line here is sugar, beet sugar and cane sugar. And it's, we're actually eating less sugar than before. It's gone down. But we have more than made up for it with high fructose corn syrup, which is this line going up. And if you add them together, total sugar intake is probably about 40 pounds more for every person for every year than it was before. Where are we putting 50 pounds more meat, 30 pounds more cheese, and 40 pounds more sugar for every single And by the way, I'm not eating those things. Someone else is getting my share. So well, where we're putting it is in heavier and heavier bodies. This is kids. The light blue bars are children in elementary school. The dark blue is kids in high school. You see the trend? Our kids are heavier as the years go by. And if our population is getting heavier, what's going to happen to diabetes? Well, let's look. This is 1994. The light blue, this is North Dakota where I grew up, less than 4% of the population had diabetes. But here in uh, Louisiana and Mississippi, it's more than 6%. That was 94. This is 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2, 3, 2004, 2005. Now, we need new colors now because we're over 8%. And if you include people who have not yet been diagnosed but have diabetes, we're at about 13% of our population.